Okay, so so far we've learned uh, how to define user data structures uh, by means of lists, encoding a data structure in terms of a list. And then you would have, if you have n fields, let's say a name, um, a first name, middle name, and last name, you could um, assign each of these to first, um, second, and third positions respectively. And then if you you could create a name, fml, and that will create uh, a new list with these three elements. And then you can use um, these functions that we called accessors to read the contents of the list and return the various fields. Um, however, if you, by mistake, uh, create a data structure that just so happens to have, you know, at least, at least the same number of elements as the other, so in this case they have the same, a 3D point and a name data structure, you could actually just use the name first to obtain the x axis of a point. So in this case, we were declaring a point one, two, three, and we're using the accessor of name uh, to obtain the first name, which will return one. And that ma doesn't make any sense, right? Ideally, you wouldn't want that. Um, so you would like to have some kind of um, notion of a type or whatever, something that would distinguish uh, values of points from values of names. And uh, of course, if you just use this plain old, you know, list, that doesn't work. So can we do that? Of course, you could add some kind of convention. Uh, and in the book, there's that's actually, I think one of, uh, I think that in the first field, you kind of set the name of a type, and then you kind of use that to look up and check. You know, you could use your first element, you could think of a, a list that has a special symbol, and you would have a special symbol for each type. And then if you before calling name first, you check if that list is, um, you know, is a, is a, um, a name or in, it's not a point. So it, it has a different kind of symbol that you would expect. But if that's still brittle and, and you could still come up with a case where you're generating some random data, or random list that you read from the input and then eventually it actually becomes a name because of that. So that's something that you want to avoid. And the racket programming language um, actually supports the idea of a struct and um, you call it with this struct name. Let me just copy paste this and, and code structs. Okay, so in this case, I just have, this is just for the test, so you can ignore that, declaring a struct. So a struct has the same name as the C, but it's nothing like C. Uh, so this is just a structure. Basically, you define the name of the of your types. In this case, is point, and then you define the fields. In this case, x, y, and z, and then you copy paste this. Transparent just means that when you print out a point, it will show. Uh, I'll give you an example why this is useful, um, and then let's just copy uh, comment this out. So if I do structs, I see that this test passes. So let me see PT, print out uh, PT, the point PT. And you see that the point appears as point one, two, three. Okay. And if I remove this transparent, what happens is it just shows point. Okay. So this is kind of like a two string uh, in Python or sorry, in Java um, and underscore underscore str in, in, in Python. Uh, so just a way to convert whatever contents your data type to a string that is printable. Okay, so in this case, we've, um, we're checking the accessor uses the same convention convention as we've used before. So it will, whenever you declare a struct point, that will create a function that has the data type minus the name of the field. So in this case, point x will return x and point y will return the right thing. And it's very useful because you don't need to, you know, it's by the same order that is created, the convention is the same, and you don't have to, there's no way for you to, while you're defining, declaring the, the point data structure, you could introduce an error, let's say maybe you mixed the two, the, the two with the three, and then you get some weird confusion because one field is actually reading the contents of another field in. And with this, you don't have that problem because the the racket programming language will take care of that for you. Okay, so 
another thing we can do is um, define another data structure. Let's call it um, a name. So that's what I'm doing here. And notice that um, there's this cool thing called point question mark. Similar, as you can see, is the same, the same convention as what we're doing in homework one. So if I do point and I call it, I get that PT is a point. And I can even do is 10 a point. Oops, sorry, question mark. And we'll say, no, it's not a point. 10 is a number, so of course it's not a point. Check true. Check false. Another thing we can do is we cannot fake it. So you cannot just do quote uh, uh, point one, two, three with quote. That won't work. Okay, so this is false. Because it's it's just some internal representation that you don't know about. That it's not available to us. So it's not just a, a, li a special list with a, with a symbol in the first element called point. That's not how it's done. Okay, so you cannot fabricate points, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so if I create, let's try to create a, um, creating the name data structure. Okay, so we create a name, we give it first, middle, and last name, and then we can create a, uh, a name John Smith, and then we can check that the first name is indeed John. Okay, and we can check, we can do a typo just to make sure things are working can see um, you gave it John without an O, but I expected with an O, so things seem to be working. And now what I can check, I can check if N, oops, I can check if um, N is indeed a name, and it is because it's passing. And then we can check is, you know, although these both of these have three fields, is the name a point? And of course it should not be. See, it's not. Let's see if um, is a name a list, perhaps. It should not be, right? A list is a different data type. Okay, so what happens if I try to do uh, use an accessor of points to a name? Let's see. If we try to call it, it says that it's expecting a point, but you gave it a name. Okay, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so this is how you create a data structure using structs. Um, so we went through this example. Uh, of course, the benefits are obvious. You can reduce boilerplate uh, code. You ensure type safety. You also make sure that your code, you know, if you give it to a third party, they cannot fabricate values of your of your data type. So one thing we can do that is now, as an exercise, what I want us to do is I want to implement the rackets ASD that we've learned so far in terms of structs. Just so we have a struct for each thing. We'll have a struct for a value, a struct for a void, a struct for lambda, one for function call, and one for function declaration. So let's try to do values first. Okay, so ignore this. What we do is we define uh, for void, void as we know has no contents, so it's just an empty list here, and we say transparent as usual. And then a number just has a single value, which is the actual literal, uh, so let's create an, a struct for that. And finally for lambda, I'm going to declare a struct that has the parameters and then the body. And the body is just going to be one thing that's going to include a list. Okay, so now what I'm going to do Finally, I define this function called um, is something a value. Okay, so if this is a value, it's a value if it's either a number or void or lambda, right? So basically, we're defining this rule here. Okay. So basically, what the point of this uh, exercise is to use structs to declare 
what we've learned in the slides before to kind of cement what we've learned before. Okay, so this is known as the abstract syntax tree. We're trying to define the abstract syntax tree. Uh, I hate that syntax tree. Okay, so now, okay, so I can create a number. I can write 10. And then what's going to happen is that it's going to print out number 10. But of course, I could store whatever I wanted here. Right? If I run this, it accepts it. And actually, Racket has a way to kind of impose rules so that you can restrict what's being stored. But for the sake of simplicity, we're not doing that here. Okay. So this is how we, we do. And I created a uh, air colon uh, prefix in all fields and functions and data types just so that um, it doesn't clash with the standard library that also defines, you know, lam lambda and number and void and so on. Okay, so next thing that we want to do is want to define expressions. And it's going to be very much the same thing, right? So for the expressions, we have basically an expression is either a value, a variable, or apply. So you can do that with this conditional. And then declaring a variable is basically the same as um, we did with uh, a number, right? And apply, we just say that has, we, we make, we distinguish between the function, which is the first thing being passed, and the arguments, which can be empty. So it's going to be a list, and this is going to be an expression itself, right? A list of expressions, and this is going to be expression itself. Okay. Finally, we can get to terms. And terms are simple. You define function term. A function term is either a define or an expression, as we've learned. And then how do we de declare a define? A define is just something that has a variable and um, a body. Okay? And for the sake of simplicity, and you, will, you actually will appreciate this, there's only one define for both forms. So here is the form that you know, the basic definition, and this is the function definition that you also learn. And you can think of the function definition as just syntactic sugar. It's just something that appears to help the user, but it, the representation, they, they both share the same. So whenever you see a function definition, this would be interpreted as um, basic definition that is storing a, a function declaration as its expression. Okay, So please read this part carefully. Okay, so to summarize, uh, in your homework uh, too, you will be manipulating elements of this AST. Uh, so these slides are important, and it's important to understand what is being stored in them. So these structs will alre already be pre-created for you. Um, okay, so in summary, you have um, some keywords to declare uh, data structures. And you can define the name of the data structure and the fields under parentheses. And try to remember to use transparent just so that you have a two string and things are printed on the screen. Uh, and this simplifies definition of data structures because it creates the selectors automatically. It creates the type queries automatically. So you get point question mark. Um, and it ensures that uh, you know the accessor is not being used for something that is not a point. It can only be used for values of that type, which is great. Um, yeah, and this is basically it. I hope you had fun today.